When I heard that ABC had a program uh, where my Christian faith had been described as a mental illness, I thought it was important for me to speak out, that I defend the faith of tens of millions of Americans against, against that kind of slander. She picked up the phone, she called me, she was very sincere, and she apologized. And one of the things my faith teaches me is grace. I said to Joy, of course I forgive you, but I did encourage her, and I'm still encouraging her, to use the forum of that program or some other public forum to apologize to tens of millions of Americans who were, who were equally offended. That was Vice President Mike Pence uh, commenting on The View host Joy Behar's apology to him after she referred to his faith as, quote, mental illness. Pence made the comments in an exclusive interview with Fox News host Sean Hannity. And joining me right now on the phone is the host of Hannity on Fox News, Sean Hannity. Sean, thanks so much for calling in. We so appreciate hey, good it. good morning, Maria. How are you this morning? Great. Congratulations. Fantastic interview with the VP last night. Were you surprised you. to hear that Behar offered the vice president an apology? What struck you from the interview? Well, what struck me is that it was Bob Iger who actually announced it publicly, and, and Joy Behar made the comments publicly. She made the apology privately, and she kind of got away with it, which tells me it's really probably not that sincere. If she really believed it, she should go to the same format of her own show and say, by the way, I said this about Christianity. I compared it to mental illness. It was wrong. I apologize to the vice president privately, and I apologize to all of you. And, you know, I think the vice president, in his typical gracious manner, was encouraging her to do that. But, you know, it's amazing the double standard that exists, because I think you know and I know that if you're a conservative and you say something similar, you're not going to get away. You're not going to get the pass that people on the left seem to get regularly, although I'm not, you know, Maria, I make my living with the First Amendment. I have never called for anybody to be fired for stupid things they say, people like Bill Maher or, or Stephen Colbert or Joy Behar or Rosie O'Donnell. Right. Uh, you know, I figure people are smart enough, they'll sort it out on their own. Yeah, you're right. And by the way, we would never have known it uh, without that shareholders meeting where Bob Iger was asked about it because of exactly the right. reason you just said. She refuses to say it publicly. We'll see if there's pressure for her to do that. I want to move on to the House Intel Committee shutting down this probe of Russia collusion between Trump and, and, the, Repo and the Russians. Uh, we knew this from the get-go that there was no collusion, but Adam Schiff is still not admitting it, Sean. Well, let me say this. I wouldn't even say it's a shutdown. It's been going on for 14 long months. And to date, there is no evidence of – look, I'll go to the report last night. It was very, very clear. We have found no evidence of collusion, coordination, or conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russians. You know, um, Adam Schiff is now publicly himself – said there's no evidence, most recently on that same show that we were just talking about, The View, and it's, it's put up or shut up time. Right. Because Adam Schiff has been on TV some 275 times, shooting off his mouth, making all these proclamations, all the insinuations of the world, but when push comes to shove, you have a Senate investigation, you have a House investigation, you got the Mueller investigation, right. and there's not one single person I know. that has ever come up with any evidence that said, boom, here, right. this is it. But we, but we knew that and, from the get-go, Sean. We knew that, the, that this was all a narrative. Well, I mean, It's the, a witch hunt. Yeah. Well, it certainly seems that way. But can, can Robert Mueller completely ignore the collusion that we did see on the side of the Democrats? I mean, let's face it. Hillary Clinton and the DNC paid for the dossier uh, that, that they used to, to wiretap the Trump campaign. That sounds like collusion to me. Well, what she did with the Clinton campaign, it was the bought and paid for dossier full of Russian lies, Russian government lies, right. and propaganda. And think about what that was being used for. The whole purpose of it was to manipulate, propagandize, and misinform the American people before the election. Um, and then it gets, as you know, it gets even worse because – this Fusion GPS, they never verified or corroborated any of the material, nor did the FBI, nor did the Department of Justice. And then they were allowed this document, unverified as it was, a political document paid for by one party, one candidate, to be presented in an application before a FISA court. Right. And they never 
they never informed the judge who paid for it, where it came from, and they presented it as if it was a, a gospel truth, That's and they exactly never did right. their due diligence. So the question so, is, can Robert Mueller ignore that, Sean? I mean, he's supposed to be looking for collusion uh, with Russia. There it is. If, if, if everything was fair, if, if Robert Mueller... I have I, I have zero faith in Robert Mueller. Oh. Robert Mueller has appointed a, a, an abusively biased, one-sided team of Clinton, Obama, DNC donors. There's no Trump supporters that he put on his team. You know, he also brought in some of, of, of the most unethical people to work on the special counsel. Andrew Weissman is a guy. He's supposed to be, according to the New York Times, Robert Mueller's pit bull. Well, this is a guy that put literally, literally tens of thousands of people out of work in the Anderson accounting uh, uh, special uh, investigation. Right. Tens of thousands of Americans lost their job. Hmm. Uh, eventually, he lost a 9-0 Supreme Court decision. He put four Merrill executives behind bars for a year. Hmm. That was overturned by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And, you know, you have a, a whole pattern of behavior where in two separate cases, if you listen to Sidney Powell, Greg Jarrett, and some other people, where he withheld exculpatory evidence. What's really fascinating that's gone on since General Flynn, since he, you know, he pled guilty to, quote, lying to the FBI, is that the judge in that case is the same judge that was involved in Ted Stevens' corruption case that was eventually overturned and thrown out. Uh, he wants to see all exculpatory evidence as it relates to General Flynn and the judge is saying, I will decide what is exculpatory. So that tells me that General Flynn's case is far from over. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, listen, we've got to ask ourselves a question here. If, if Adam Schiff is going to go on TV 275 times and he can't answer the question after 14 months of an investigation, right. where, where is the evidence? then the country has a right to demand we move on. Yes. You know, Rob, Rob, Robert Mueller investigating Jared Kushner's, you know, investment in a property in Chicago is meaningless to the American people. And it literally hamstrings this president from doing his job. Hmm. Yep. And, and, the, and the double standard is outrageous. Yep. As and, you rightly point out. And, and, you know, Hillary Clinton is still trying to figure out what happened. She's in India trashing uh, Trump supporters again. Sean, we have a lot yeah. to talk about with you. I hope you come back soon.